All right, I hope you're ready because this is going to be part two of the video that I did yesterday. Now, if you watched the other video, I pulled my Walkman apart and I replaced the belt. And then I uh, lubricated these gears here. Well, when I got the thing back together, popped a tape in and was testing, I noticed that the playback was slow. So I figured I'd show you a couple of other things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, I'm going to clean out the electrical switches and the volume knob, and I'm also going to do a speed adjustment. I'll show you where all those things are, and then also uh, show you a little bit about a problem that people have with these speed adjustments. So here's the switches. Um, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. Um, and then also, the speed adjustment is right here. I kind of got lucky on this Walkman. It's uh, RV601, it's labeled. I've seen a couple models where they're either, I couldn't find an adjustment or it wasn't labeled, but luckily this one's pretty easy. It says it right there, it's speed, great. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna clean these switches out. I'm gonna use this product. Um, you guys, if you've watched my videos, you've seen me use this on a bunch of other stuff. This is pretty awesome. If you're into vintage electronics, this is a must have. I use this on all the pots from the stereos and stuff that I get from the thrift store. Sometimes uh, any sort of a variable resistance type connection, these, this is going to make it work like new. Actually, uh, things that people used to think that needed to be replaced, a lot of times they just be gummed up and this is how you'd fix it. So. What we got inside of here is these, uh, this adjustment. It's a variable resistor. Now, I wanted to explain what that is, right? What happens is as you rotate a variable resistor, the resistance kind of goes up in a kind of a linear way, right? That's how it's supposed to work. And let's say the factory adjustment for this one is like set right here, some arbitrary number like 600 ohms or something, right? Well, um, this thing's been setting in one spot for 20 years and uh, what happens is the little mechanical arm, if you were to look inside of this thing, you'd see some sort of a mechanical connection that kind of rotates on an axis and as it rotates on this resistor, the resistance kind of goes up, right? Well, uh, the, the mechanical connection here gets gummed up and this is what causes an increase of resistance. If you put this onto an analog multimeter where you had a uh, a pointer, instead of just seeing it gradually go up like this as you turned it, on these broken ones you'll see it kind of go, it'll go like this and it'll shoot way up and then come down a little bit, up, down, very, what it looks like on this diagram would be like, it's got a little gunk, like the resistance is higher than it should be. Sometimes it'll just completely be open and this is what you have, rather than what you should have, which is this nice linear resistance adjustment. Or, or I mean, it could be a, a curve also. It's just not supposed to be all over the place like that. So I'm gonna pull this thing down. And my deoxid here, if I were to just spray this directly onto these, I'd have this crap everywhere. So what I do is I'll get a little dropper bottle, like this one, and I'll spray it in there. So here's my deoxid, and it's a little bit easier to control. This stuff is still pretty thin, so I'm gonna do this carefully, but I'm gonna go on the switch, look for a little crack in it, and just put a little drop right on kind of the crack, and then you wanna work it. Just kind of work the switch. Go back and forth. I'll give it about 10, 15 times. You're gonna work this more after you get it back together too, but that's basically what you do to these. Um, just clean them out, just a little dab of that, try to get it to where it goes in into the switch and then just work it back and forth like that. Let's see, I got this other one right here. There's the last one. Stick this right here. Good. Gonna work it. There we go. Now for the last one, the speed adjustment, it's important to clean this before you adjust it. I've seen people where they've made a speed adjustment and they complain that their Walkman is either too fast or too slow and they can't get it quite right. That's because the sweet spot where this thing has been sitting for the last 20 years is the part that's gummed up. So unless you clean that, it's just gonna to continue to kind of have that erratic operation when you 
adjust it. So I just dab the stuff on there and then I'll get my little jeweler screwdriver here and just work it back and forth. Kind of break all that stuff off of it. Um, you can work this all the way to the end points. You don't really have to because if you had to adjust this speed adjustment so far that it's at the end of its travel either way, like there's something wrong with your Walkman other than this speed adjustment. So there it is, working it, right? All right, now for the volume knob, you're just going to take your deoxid, kind of go behind the knob a little bit, as close to the uh, resistor as you can get. Try to get it into the cracks, and then you're just going to work that back and forth. This one, I actually will run this all the way to the end of its adjustment, either which way. And this will usually help. If you have a cracky volume knob, this will fix that completely. But you might notice that after you clean it, your even if it wasn't cracky, a lot of times your Walkman will have a, uh, it'll get louder, which is great if you have one that's just been playing really like quietly. And that pretty much does it. So the next thing I'm going to do, which I'm not going to record, is I'm going to actually make the adjustment of the speed. And to do that, what I'm going to do is pop the batteries back in here. And then I'm going to get a tape. For, for There's different ways you can do this, but for me, I just do it by ear. I'll just get a tape that's something I'm really familiar with, what it should sound like. I'll stick my headphones in and press play, and then just kind of tune it. Um, if you have a calibration cassette, which you could make, if you have like a synthesizer or an audio generator, you could basically make a, uh, a cassette that's got a certain frequency, like let's say 600 hertz even, right? Well, you could look at the sine wave on an oscope and kind of do a precision calibration on it like that. Um, I think you can probably also, if you had a synthesizer with a key on it, you could basically record a note and then and then you could adjust this with a guitar tuner as well. You just play it, play your uh, microphone into a guitar tuner and then adjust that even. Or you can uh, you could take a cassette like. Uh, that has an exact play time, 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Get a stopwatch, start the song, and then at the end of it, stop it and see if it's came out either a few seconds too long or a few seconds too short. Just kind of tweak it according to that. But that'll pretty much do it for this video. I hope I've taught you something. Check out my other videos.